And the theme is how to do counseling. Counseling is very, very helpful. Counseling is a useful tool. Um, now, first we need to understand the difference between counseling and teaching. Teaching is suitable for people who are ready to learn and change. And uh, teaching doesn't deal with feelings. It's just teaching them some facts and tell people what to do. And counseling is suitable for people who need help to handle their, uh, their problems. And, uh, and so sometimes, you know, like people have personal problem and they don't know how to handle it or they are controlled by the emotions. They don't know how to do it. They cannot manage it or uh, they have mo no motivation to work on something. For instance, the marriage problem, they, have, they, they want to divorce. They don't want to change. So it's for people who cannot handle the problem or when they are controlled by the emotions. Uh, so it's guiding people. Okay, if I use an illustration, he's at this level and I, I like them to go to a high level, then you don't just tell them, okay, do this. You know, for instance, a couple come to you and then you just tell them, uh, you just um, forgive and then your family will become better. Now, at that point, they really are not ready to forgive. They don't want to forgive at all. So you just tell them to forgive. Some people just command them, tell them, it's not going to change. We need to guide them, okay? Now, your, uh, wh what is the condition of marriage now? Do you want to work on it? Do you think there's hope? And if he says there's no hope, then we can ask him why he thinks there's no hope. And is there anything good about the relationship now? Is there any way to improve it, to work on it? So we can ask questions and have your spouse done anything good in the past? Uh, does she have any strengths? Uh, can, could you relate to her? Can, could you relate to her in the past? And what is changing now? Uh, what, why is it so difficult now to ask him questions, to guide him to understand the situation? And do you want to work on it? Uh, do you want your life to be more peaceful and joyful? And do you want to uh, uh, build up your relationships so that you can enjoy your marriage and also life would be easier, life would be more enjoyable? And do you want that to happen? And then if you want that to happen, what can you do? And what have you done in the past? Does it work? And what are some other ways to work on the problem? So you guide a person to change step by step, a little step, a little step, gradually to change. Teaching is for people who are already ready to learn, and then you just tell them what, how to do it. Uh, for instance, someone wants to know how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and you just tell them how. Uh, you don't need to guide them. But if a person doesn't believe in a feeling in feeling of the Holy Spirit and he is reluctant to experience the Holy Spirit then we need counseling now counseling may not be a formal counseling session it just can be a conversation just say why do you think uh, the infilling of the Holy Spirit is not good and what has happened in the past uh, uh, when you know uh, when you heard about the infilling of the Holy Spirit uh, what made you think that the infilling of the Holy Spirit is not good? Uh, so we, we find out and then guide them, find out where they are and empathize with them, empathize with them. So counseling includes empathizing with the feelings and responding to the feelings and bring healing to the feelings. And guide them to understand himself and find ways to restore his life. So that's between difference between teaching and counseling. And many pastors think they are counseling, but they are actually teaching. Now, if they're ready, that's fine. But if they're not ready, you just tell them, forgive one another. Okay, now say sorry to one another. And then they might say it in front of you, but they are not really saying it from the heart. And then they go home, the same thing will happen again. So we need to guide them to see uh, the importance of of forgiving one another and what are the reasons that they cannot forgive one another what is stopping them and how is it damaging the relationship and uh, so we, we guide them before we you know ask them 
we, instead of telling them, we can ask them, do you think you can forgive now? Do you think you can understand your spouse now? Why, why she talks like that? Can you understand why? And then, so then we, we can uh, 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 guide them to, to work on the relationship. Okay, now, counseling has this goal to work on the spiritual life. Okay, counseling can work on different things. Like if someone has a problem with, in the relationship with God, then we can do counseling to help. And then we also should train people in the church that they can do counseling. And then physical, also health of the body, because some people don't take good care of the body and they think that's the way to live. And then we can counsel them to understand uh, the need to take care of their body. And very often taking care of the emotions will also uh, help their body. And then mental and emotional. So the thinking, they might be thinking uh, in a, a wrong way that they have a lot of frustration and anger, they hate someone, they think the world, you know, the, the, uh, the, they think that the whole world is problematic. Now the world is problematic, but they, they're just uh, being overwhelmed by the problems of the world and they think the church has problems. Now the church may have problem, but he's overwhelmed by the problem. So his thinking is, there's no hope, there's no future. And he might have emotional problem that is controlled by his emotions. And then interpersonal relationship that he might have problem with uh, relationship with spouse or with friends or with church members or with the environments that, uh, that he just doesn't like living in this world. He doesn't like living in, a, in his house. He doesn't like the surrounding everything around him. So we can counsel people to help them to appreciate the world, appreciate the world that God has created. And the group to have a healthy relationship in the family, in the church, in the fr uh, with the friends and in the workplace. So in, we, have, we all have uh, groups of activity that will relate to people in a church or in a home or in the community or in the workplace. So how to have good relationship in these different places. And also the meaning and purpose of life that some people, they don't have meaning in life. They just say, I want Jesus to come back now. So I, I, don't, have, I don't want to live in this world anymore. They don't find meaning in this world. So anything wrong in the life need to be corrected. Now, sometimes we can do this in a sermon. Sermon is teaching. But when people are not ready to change or they don't know how to change or they're not motivated to change, uh, then we need to counsel them. Okay, and then, uh, so I explain more things about health of a person, uh, the whole, the health of the whole person. First, his external in, inter and internal lifestyle. What is external lifestyle? He, how he, you know, what time he sleep, what time he uh, wakes up and work, and what does he do in the, at home, and what does he do in the place of work, what does he do in the church, so this is his external activities. And the internal activities will be his thinking and his emotions. Uh, sometimes people, you know, they have problem in the external lifestyle that they, they yell at people, they don't have friends, they cannot make friends with people, or internal, that they are em emotional, they're angry, they're frustrated, they're full of all kinds of problems in their life. And then a support system from God and people. We, need, we all need that. We need that support from God to have strength from God and from people. Now, it doesn't mean we depend on people, but each person, if we love God, then we love people. And when we love people, we'll, we would have healthy relationship with people. If a person has zero healthy relationship with people, there's something wrong. If he cannot have good relationship with his church members, with his pastor, uh, with uh, his family, with his neighbors, then there's something wrong. And we all need to have support system. That means when he's in trouble, he can find someone to help him. That he's not just alone facing any kind of problem. If a person does, cannot handle his life well, and then when he's in trouble, he cannot find anyone to help him, then he would be in trouble. Then he could have, uh, 
have a crisis that he cannot manage the situation. And then his ability to handle difficult situation. That means, okay, if he loses his job, now some people when he loses his job, he is frustrated, he gets angry, and some people even they lose a job and they, and they take a gun and go back and kill all the people in the company, you know, that has happened. Uh, that people that just cannot handle difficult situation or the wives yell at him and then he would kill his wife or uh, beat up his wife and things like that. He cannot handle difficult situation. Now when we come across difficult situation when we are healthy, then we say, okay, we are, I'm just facing a difficult situation. There are ways to handle it. It's not impossible to handle the problem. It's possible. There are possible ways to handle a problem. So that is the ability to handle difficult situation. So we look at this. Is the person, does he have healthy external life? Uh, does he have internal healthy life style? And then does he have support system from God and from people? Can he relate to people? Can he, can he get help from people? And then also his ability to handle difficult situation. Uh, did he lose his power to handle problems at all? And then each person also need to build up his self-image because self-image, if a person has zero self-image, he thinks he's garbage, he's nothing, he's useless, nobody likes him, he would have problem in every area of his life. God doesn't teach us that you, know, you have no value. We are all valuable. We are children of God. We are precious. That God loves us. We are very precious. So healthy self-image is very important okay now as a social be being now our self-image depends on many things okay i'm going to show you more later that uh after this one so this one first one is as a social being ability to be alone in peace without fear of being left alone or feeling overwhelmingly bored now, some people they cannot be alone when they're alone, they feel very bored. They, 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 they have to find someone that is not healthy. Then he, he has a low self-image. He thinks that he has no value when he's alone. And then ability to be intimate, to have good relationship with people. Ability to have deep relationship with people without fear of being rejected. Now some people cannot have good relationship with people. They cannot talk with people. They cannot tell people about their needs, their feelings, because they, they just cannot have close relationship with people. So this is not healthy, that he cannot be alone or he cannot be, uh, relate to people. Now some people, when they're with a group of people, they just cannot talk with people. They don't know how to relate. They, uh, they, they cannot have friends. So that is problematic. Then he would have very low self-image. Now our self-image first comes from God, that we are precious. We are children of God. But secondly, also come from our ability to relate to people as a social being, our ability to do things, to achieve things, to overcome problems. You know, if a person cannot do anything well, he fails in his job, he cannot take care of his home, his home is like a garbage can, then he has no ability to take care of problems. Then he would not have self healthy self image. So healthy self-image first come from God, that we are precious in the sight of God, we are, we, we, uh, that we have value because we are a child of God. And then our ability in social uh, relationship, in relationship people with ourselves and how to manage problem, how to face difficulties. Okay, and then ability of action, also important for, for self-image that he's self-motivated to action. He's motivated to, to take action. Now some people, they, they have no motivation to, to take action. They, they just, uh, you know, some people have emotional problems. They just lie in the bed and they cannot do anything. They just lie down there, lie there for a long time. No motivation to study, no motivation to go to church, no motivation. Some people have serious problems. They, they don't have motivation to take a shower, to clean themselves, to brush the teeth. They, they have no motivation. That is very 
serious problem, no uh, very low self-image. And creativity, the ability to create new ways to replace problematic ways or to solve problems. Because we all need creativity, okay? If something goes wrong, he has to think of a way to solve a problem. If a friend leaves him, doesn't want to be his friend anymore, he needs to find creative way either to restore the relationship or to build up other relationship or to learn from the past. So he needs the creativity to think of ways. We all need creativity. We need creativity to build up the relationship in the family, to build a relationship in the church, to do ministry, to do our work, how to do it better. Uh, we all need the creativity to think of ways to solve problems. And then ability to commit to oneself, to, to career, to personal relationship and to group activities, and to be able to follow through with the commitment that some people cannot commit to themselves. They cannot commit to action. They cannot commit to marriage. They just do things for a little while and then they will stop. They will, they will quit the job. They will be fired from, uh, from the job. So because they cannot continue to do things continuously. Now that came from the lack of motivation in his life. So this needs healing. When a person is like that, that needs healing. And then a sense of self-worth that we have value, that believe that one has self-worth, believe that one can face and handle difficulties with God's help, that we can face difficulties, and accept one's past and has hope for the future. Now, accept one's past, what does that mean? That means we can accept the failure in the past. We can accept that we got hurts in the past. We can accept that our family members died in the past. Now, some people could not accept that. The parents died years ago, and they still feel very, very lonely. They cannot find a value because they cannot accept the past. They can accept the passing of the, uh, the parents. And then also God's love and acceptance give people self-worth. People need to learn accept God's acceptance of them. They, uh, that we need to understand that God loves us, we are important, that we have value from God. And then five, self-worth is also built on when people build up on their whole lives. That is relationship with God and people and spiritual gifts and family and, life and work and ministry. So that our self-worth is also built on our ability to do things. If a person says he, uh, God loves him, he is important, but he never succeeds in anything. He always fails when he does things. He always gets fired. Uh, and his, in his marriage, he is always yelling. Then he would have a lot of problems. He would have a uh, low self-image. Okay, as an experiential being, can accept the emotional experiences and does not suppress, ignore, or deny the emotions. So as an experiential being, that means we experience different things. We experience emotions. Can we accept it and don't suppress it? You know, like sometimes people think suppressing emotions is a, a good way to handle it. Actually, it's a bad way. For instance, he has anger. He, he hates his family members, he, he has a lot of anger, but he says, well, I cannot be angry with them, so he just suppresses his anger, but he really hates them. He wants them to die, he hates them. He, he doesn't know how to handle that hatred. He doesn't know how to handle that, that desire to see the family die, or to see someone be punished. He cannot handle that. Then he just suppress it because he cannot just go and kill the person. Then, then he would be you know, then he would suppress his, all his feelings and then he would have frustration inside, he would have bad dreams, he would uh, be very unhappy. So we don't suppress our feeling, we handle our feelings, we bring healing to the feeling. Or they ignore, they say, well, I don't have hatred, I don't dislike him, but actually he does. Uh, it, deny, that means they, they, they say that I don't have it. Ignore means they have it, they have the feeling, but he doesn't want to do anything. He ignore. He he knows he has hatred, but he doesn't want to do anything. He just leave it alone. Leaving it alone doesn't solve the problem. Okay, we have to resolve the hatred. That we say, okay, it's 
that person has been hurt by people many times therefore he hurts me I don't have to hate him if I hate him then it it, it ruined the relationship with God and it hurts me more so I'm not going to hate him and I can let go and he has been hurt by people therefore he is miserable he is controlled by anger so he, I, I want to have compassion on him and pray for him and bless him so then I can put down the anger it doesn't matter he cannot steal from me he cannot take any good things from me even if he does take some uh, money from me but he cannot steal my blessings my my uh, my value my worth in God he cannot steal those things and also he can experience joy and pleasure and at the same time can control our desire to pursue pleasure now some people cannot experience joy they they you know when people suppress the feeling when they see some good thing they don't get happy that is not healthy and uh, uh, earlier I said how can we experience joy we count the blessings of God whenever I come close to God God is very happy and I can be happy I can rejoice in the Lord hallelujah I rejoice in the Lord I thank God hallelujah praise God I'm happy I enjoy God I can I can enjoy uh, life because God is happy with me whenever I do anything good, whenever I praise Him, then we can have joy and we can enjoy the marriage. Now, when people cannot relate to people, then they cannot relate to the wife or husband, then they dislike the wife or husband for something they did wrong and then they, they yell at them and then it would ruin the relationship. They, so they don't know how to have joy with a spouse we need to learn to be happy now sometimes you know I would dance with my wife just be happy just you know do things that to express our happiness it's right to be happy it's okay to be happy we can be happy like children it's okay you know when I sing with my church members when I lead worship uh, part of time is loving God but part of time is also enjoying God you know that that uh, I have songs that you know that we can rejoice, uh, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. So I rejoice with my church members. We can be happy. We can be happy with God with people. We can ha be happy with ourselves. Hallelujah! As an experiential being. So if a person lose ability has lost the ability to be joyful we have to help him to to be healed so that he can be thankful for things he can count his blessings and then he can be joyful again and also can calm himself down and comfort oneself when facing difficulties now some people when they face difficult difficulties they just scream and cry and and and, uh, and just you know uh, beat himself and some people cut themselves cut themselves because they said well cutting themselves the pain will cover the pain that they have emotionally but that's that's not a healthy way so we can calm ourselves and say it doesn't matter people cannot steal from me can, people cannot hurt me I can rejoice in the Lord and God is happy with me when I when I f f love him and obey him Okay, the purpose of counseling someone is to strengthen the relationship with God, to build up his relationship with God. So when people say they need counseling, they have problem with the family, the first thing I do is to build up the relationship with God. I'll ask them, do you believe that God loves you? Do you think God is happy when you praise Him? Do you think God is happy when you worship Him and obey Him and read the Bible and pray? Do you think God is happy with you? Do you think God is happy with you when you serve God? Many people are not happy. They, they just say, I'm not good enough. God will see many things I'm not good enough. Now that is the human way. That's the way of the law. The way of the law is just to say, the, you know, look at the bad things. You know, if we look at the bad things, if God looks at our bad things all the time, God will not be happy with us. God sees our bad things and then He will motivate us to repent but at the same time he will see the good things we have that we are trying to repent and we are trying to turn away from the sin and we trust in God and praise God and rely on God God is very happy 
whenever we do any little good things, like a cup of cold water to a little one. So that is very important to build relationships. So if someone comes to you with any difficulty, the first thing to build up is a relationship with God. If a person has very good relationship with God, that he feels very joyful with the Lord, he knows that God is happy with me, generally he would have better relationship with people. Okay, and then we want to help him to think normally and correctly. Now some people think in a wrong way. They say, people hate me, therefore I hate them. Uh, even the church is not nice to me, therefore I hate the church, you know, so the thinking is wrong. And they think that when people mistreat him, then he should mistreat people and hate people. And when people yell at him, then he yell at people. And then three, to help him to manage his emotions. How to manage his emotions, how to, how to uh, resolve his emotions and say, I don't have to be angry because anger will bring more destruction and it's, uh, you know, someone yells at me, it's his problem and also he has been hurt by people, therefore he hurts other people. I don't have to be angry with him, he cannot steal my blessings, therefore I let go, doesn't matter. He yells at me doesn't mean I will lose something. I don't have to take it seriously. I just let go of what he said. All the negative words I can let go and I can rejoice again. Then, and then he prays God and then the joy will come back to him. Now the next day, the pain might come back. And then you manage it again. Manage the thinking and then manage the feeling. And then the third day, it might come back again. We keep managing it until one day it goes away. And then we become more and more peaceful and joyful. So that's how we manage our emotions. Sometimes it takes a long time to manage it uh, so that we can live in a joyful way. And four, to help the body to restore its vitality. Now some people, they don't, you know, they don't have joy. So they, you know, that the body has problem too. They cannot sleep well. Uh, they have pain over the body. You notice that people have emotional problems. Generally, they have more uh, uh, health problem. They will have pain in the body uh, because our emotions will affect the body. So how to restore the vitality? First, to restore the, uh, build up the relationship with God and also build, uh, uh, restore the healthy, the uh, uh, godly way of thinking and, uh, and, and take care of the emotions. And then people need to eat healthy food and have exercise under the sun uh, to sleep early to have enough sleep this thing will restore the body to have vitality to have strength and then five to help him to restore health uh, healthy interpersonal relationship now if a person says I have good relationship with God but he has no friend on earth there's something wrong if he has no friend on earth because if he loves the Lord he will love the people of God and then he can talk to them he can help them and then the people will respond then he would have good interpersonal relationship so the reason why people cannot have good healthy uh, interpersonal relationship because they don't have good relationship with God because they have problem in the thinking and in the emotions and then they don't know how to relate to people so that need healing and number six, to help him to appreciate and enjoy nature and the environment. That we can enjoy nature and look at the sky, look at the, the, uh, the flowers, the plants, the butterflies and the birds and say, oh, those things are beautiful. Thank God for the creation and look at their own body and say, thank God for my body that you have created in such a wonderful way. And then seven, to help him to have healthy group activities that he can relate to the group. Some people can relate to one friend, but he cannot relate to people in a group because he, he feels insecure, so he cannot make friends with people. So he cannot uh, uh, make friends with more people and cannot participate in group, group activities like in a church or cell groups or in the family because they, they, in a group they feel very insecure. So they need to build up their self-image so that they feel secure to uh, uh, to have group activities and bring healing in the above area. Sometimes people have hurt feelings uh, when they have a problem in the family, uh, when they have problem with the relationship with God, they feel very guilty about the sins and they cannot manage uh, overcome the sins or they have problem with groups and then they, they 
uh, they have they got hurt from the groups, so they need healing. Okay, difference between teacher and counselor. We won't go over that again. 